You may have heard of or even used digital assessment platforms in your class. And there's a lot of value to having these big platforms with assessment banks and all these practice problems. And that is good to have for students. But I think the real power lies in the assessment data on the back end. And not just for viewing the assessment data to see how the students did, but it's using that data to personalize future instruction for your students. It's not that easy to do, but once you figure it out, it's one of the most powerful ways that you could even use educational technologies. In this video, I'm going to show you how. The platform that I'm going to use to demonstrate how to do this process is called Albert. If you're new to Albert, it's a platform that has literally thousands upon thousands of practice items for all different subject areas. It starts with middle school, works its way up to high school, and even has just about every AP course that you could imagine. So you can not only access the hundreds and thousands of practice items there, but you can also access the powerful analytics on the back end. So you can take a look at the data, the dashboards, all of the information that you would need to then personalize it for your students. So the first step is we'll take a look at some of the content that's in there, some of the courses, some of the different assessment banks that you can choose from. And then I'll walk you through some of the different information that you get as a teacher that can help you then take that assessment data, find out which students are struggling and in what specific areas they're struggling in, and then personalize future instruction for those students. So for a teacher that already uses the Albert platform, this is what the home page looks like. Once I'm here, I have my classes. I'm gonna use the AP Biology class here with some student information. But if you wanna explore some of the other content that's there, I'm gonna show you how to do that. So if you click on the subjects area and scroll down, you can see on the left side that they outline different ELA math and science for middle school, uh, ELA math, social studies, science, and test prep for high school, as well as some college level courses. So you can also take a look here on the all of the AP exams. So for instance, they have AP Biology, AP Chemistry down the line. So there are a lot of different courses here. And even if you don't teach one of these specific courses, you can still pull from the assessment bank. You can still pull a lot of the different questions and practice problems from these in one of your other courses. So those are some of the different subjects that are available. Let's take a closer look at once you're in the platform, what you can do once you have your course set up. So you can see it right on the home page, you can see one of the values of having a platform like this is that not only do you have access to all the content that I just showed you, but you can also see exactly how your students are doing. So right off the bat, I can see that based on the assessments in this course, I get a quick overview of all the students that are maybe struggling, uh, some that are passing, proficient, excellent, all the way up to mastery. So depending on the different tool you use, the different criteria and color coding might be different, but the, the point of this is you can actually get a quick snapshot of how students are doing in your class. So if I wanted to create a new assignment for my students, I'm just going to show you quickly how you would go through that. So if I click create assignment, I'll go to my subject guide for this particular topic. And then I can see these are all of the AP biology practice problems, free responses, and then even full blown assessments that I could use and assign to my students. So I'm just going to pick this one from, uh, from 1.2 elements of life. If I click here, I'll quick assign, and then I can choose either my whole class or just specific students. I'll talk in a little bit about why choosing specific students might make sense based on the data you get back in this platform. But it's that simple. You just go through, find what types of assignments you want to choose, and then share those out with your students. Now let's take a look at the data you see on the back end so that you can fully customize the experience for your students. Okay, so we're back at the dashboard here, and the first thing you can do is you can filter some of this. So based on the subjects you teach or the subjects within the class that you teach, you can filter on this left tab here. You can also do the number of attempts, so the most recent, or if you had multiple attempts, you can change that as well, as well as the date range. Here you get some overall analytics, so you can see that 14 hours was the total time spent by students in this class. But let's dig a little bit deeper. So if I wanna look at one specific student to see how they're doing, so let's take a look at this one on the top left. So the one that was in the category of a student that was struggling a bit in the class. Now that I'm in here, I can take a closer look at the total number of questions they answered, the total time they spent, and their accuracy. So if I want to dig even deeper than that, I can go to the specific assignments they, uh, they had, uh, take a look at the questions, the percentage uh, completion, and then even within that, some of the different subtopics within the course and where they may have been struggling more than others. So there's only a few different examples that I have in this particular uh, data set, but you can see that if I had a whole class or a whole course worth of assessments, I could actually drill down to the specific units that they were struggling with or uh, doing better in than others. 
The other way you can take a look at some of the different assessment data is in the insights setting. So here again, I get a, a quick overview of their mastery levels based on their class. I can scroll down and see, all right, so this is the total time spent total number of attempts, and then what their level of mastery is. So again, I get a nice quick visual of which students are doing well on these assessments and which ones would need a little bit more remediation and review. One other thing I like about a tool like this is that not only do you see overall how students are doing, you can even jump into the specific questions and content standards that more students are struggling with than others. So if I click on questions, I can get a quick overview of the different ones that students did better on than others. So for instance, as I scroll down, I can see that this question itself, um, the guard cells and transpiration, this one a lot of students had some issues with. So that would, this is where, what I mean by personalization. You can take this information and say, hmm, you know what? A lot of kids struggled on that specific topic in my class. Maybe I should go back and reteach that lesson or teach it in a different way. Or even better, maybe I find the specific students that struggled on that topic and then reassign them uh, an alternative assessment or do some reteaching and then find out if they've actually gained mastery in that subject area. So this is by question, but if I wanna drill down by standard as well, and this is also really powerful, especially if you're a school that's into standard-based learning and competency-based progressions, I could also filter it by the standard setting. So if I go down here, I can see by the actual standard in this science class, um, which students did better on others. Again, there's not a, a ton in here because this is just a small sample set, but you get the point here that I could go through this specific standard from this course. I could find the number of questions that I've assigned to the students, the time spent on it, their progress, and then their accuracy. So again, just one other way that you can drill into the data to see how I can personalize this for students. Okay, so just to recap some of the main points here, this is one example of a platform that has a ton of information, a lot of content, a lot of assessments and activities, and you get really nice insights in how students are performing and what their levels of mastery are. But again, I think the real value is taking a look at that information, finding out what students are doing well, what maybe they're struggling with, and then finding ways to personalize instruction and tailoring it to them, uh, just to make sure that all students are progressing and that you spend the most efficient amount of time that you have reaching the students where they really need help. If you're interested in exploring the platform featured in this video, you can go to albert.io or click on the link in the comment section. Also make sure to subscribe to the channel. I'll be posting EdTech tutorials, video walkthroughs, educational strategies, and more. So make sure to check back for regularly posted content. Thanks and best of luck in your teaching.